Greetings and salutations! Hi guys, welcome to another video from the Garish Grackle. Today we'll be doing an introduction in Baroque. According to the Oxford Dictionary, Baroque is defined as a style that is both highly ornate and decorative. The Baroque movement, with its philosophical basis rooted in the re-emergence and triumph of Catholicism on the international scene, had its lifespan during the turn of and well into the 17th century. Baroque, through the innovations of painter Michelangelo de Moresi, best known as Caravaggio from his town of Bourg, incorporated within the themes and especially techniques of their art almost a rebellion against the revival of the Greek and Roman classical style which was the fundamental frame that moulded the Renaissance. This rebellion is relevant not only in better grasping the political dynamic during the time but also the religious versus scientific war which was raging. The artists commissioned by the church, both in Spain and in Rome, had the resources to fully express the might and grandeur of their Catholicism and spared no restraint in representing their faith in marble and on canvas. However, it is imperative when understanding the Baroque movement of the time that although the techniques were gaining universality, the movement is differentiated into varied styles across nationalities. A full grasp of differentiated Baroque is crucial because of the historical events significant to the evolution of modernity and the burgeoning of a modern state. As Hans Cronenberger states, the Renaissance and Reformation had swept aside the circumstances in which nations and populations could be passed around and inherited like so much real estate. A key nation to the Baroque movement who, through their independence from Spain and increasing wealth from the colonies, represent a unique field that employed the prerequisite characteristic of Baroque, yet displayed themes of Protestant civility. This was the Dutch. Uh, in the northern Netherlands, Holland was divided from the south Flanders. Therefore, a considerable schism in style, subject matter and technique was evident across immediate borders. And even though the papacy had much to offer in the way of resources in Flanders, art in Holland flourished into its own golden age. As art depended on the commissions of wealthy merchants, the artists living in Holland relied for their livelihood on appeasing their patrons. Therefore, the scenes depicted were often of the ordinary man, family and effects. Art historian and scholar Germain Bazin defines Baroque while loosely comparing the style to the classic revival employed during the previous century. Loosely because to directly compare and contrast the two would be erroneous and misleading, indicative of a shallow grasp of the movement. Firstly, Baroque to an extent complements the Greco-Roman classical. The artists of the time were in awe of their predecessors and studied their work fastidiously. Also, the one style does not directly, in neat categories, oppose the other and cannot be understood in simple contrasts. However, there is a noticeable breakaway that challenges the classical principles. Accordingly, the lines and tones of that comprised classic, classical elements were simple, clear, and each scene was dominated in light. Depth was achieved using perspective. The classical philosophy's main pursuit was to observe and describe nature, the order and composition of the elemental universe, and in doing so, uncover the deepest secrets of the structure of things. Those of the Baroque school used the vocabulary of classical antiquity, but often figures were illustrated according to burgeoning notion of naturalism. That is, gods of an era gone are depicted with human characteristics captured and frozen in time. This arrested motion is elemental to the qualities that comprise the style. Naturalism is defined by the Oxford Dictionary in art or literature as a style and theory of representation based on the accurate depiction of detail. The artists contributing to the Baroque era were focused on the multi-dimensional aspects of reality. They sought to capture the numerous layers of a scene, which included the penetrating psychological portrayals of saints and gods of both Biblical and Greco-Roman in the faces of ordinary men. 
In so doing, they captured their subjects engaged in a moment of pure action, its trajectory displayed often on the verge of the climax of the story to create tension and heighten the dramatic feel of the scene. Stated in a documentary entitled Caravaggio's Secrets, a chief contribution of the Baroque era in the realm of art was overwhelmingly illusionistic paintings with extraordinary psychological complexity. Just a side note, there are numerous artists, art historians and scholars in my videos and I'll put all of them in the description box below. So yet another artist, uh, art historian, Robert Wallace in his World of Benini, he describes psychological realism as a feature intrinsic to the Baroque movement, characterized by the artist's determination to maintain the integrity of the emotions and actions portrayed. This is achieved by depicting these as accurately and true to form as possible. According to Germaine Bazin, mentioned earlier, psychology as a study had evolved considerably in the 17th century. And I'm ending this video here and will be continuing in my Baroque and introduction in my next video. So, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this and watch out for my next video. Thanks a lot.